coming up. I tackle reassembling the engine on this tiny 1998 convertible project car. I talk to fellow YouTuber Jim over at Jim Builds to get some advice on how to do this properly. And finally, I turn the key and see if the engine's gonna start after I've had it in bits. Did I mention I've never done this before? Hopefully nothing goes too wrong, right? Welcome to another episode of Punto How To. I have spent the last two months stripping down and rebuilding the engine on this ultra rare Italian super mini. You will know if you've been following this series, but in the last video we had the engine ready to be reassembled and we had gathered all of the new bits we'd need to put it back together. This however has taken a lot longer than expected, as I lost a clip for one of the fuel injectors, and I had to wait for that to come from Italy. But now I have all the parts, let's put this engine back together. One of the first jobs I'm going to tackle, before I even put the cylinder head back on, because it's going to give me better access, is I'm going to be putting the water pump back on this side of the engine here. Now this is the new water pump, and I'll show you compared to the old one. So this is a much better water pump, much bigger impeller, much deeper impeller, so it's going to shift a lot more water. And, let's put that one down, this is not plastic. Let me just put this by my mic. That is metal, this is not plastic, this is a really good impeller good water pump and this is a Gates one. What I need to do is get some of my RTV sealant which I have got here and I'm going to put a bead of this around and then we're going to bolt that up to the side of the engine. So let's do that now. I put on some gloves, got everything perfectly lined up to be able to shoot the footage of this and then proceeded to stick my head in the way of the camera for the entire duration of applying the sealant. However, with the sealant correctly applied and the side of the engine cleaned up to get a good clean mating surface, I was ready to install the water pump. I had also reconditioned all of the bolts that secure the water pump as well, so as to make sure that everything was like new when it was going back together. All of the bolts were installed and set to the correct torque. This is the point I was beginning to get nervous with this car and putting the engine back together. I've never gone this far with doing major engine work before and I needed some more expert advice on putting things back together. At this point I wanted to ask a very specific question which is do you need to get the head skimmed when doing this sort of work? So I spoke to friend and fellow YouTuber Jim over at Jim Builds to get some more advice. There's no straightforward yes or no answer but if you've taken your cylinder head off it's usually for a reason. Now I've got a spare cylinder head for my Cortina here it is rough, um, but it's a pretty good example of what to look for with a cylinder head, whether it needs skimming. And this one will, as you'll see in a second, but you can do a simple check using a straight edge ruler, some feeler gauges, and a marker pen. So let me show you how you do it. As you can see, this cylinder head is pretty badly pitted. Uh, I think it's either come from the bottom of the ocean or it's been left outside for about 50 years. But what we'll do with a straight edge is run it along the surface normally at 90 degrees so we'll do across the cylinder head like this and one across like I say again at 90 degrees and if you want to do a secondary check is that I would normally go at, uh, again at 45 degrees what you're looking for here just move the camera around is any gaps between the cylinder head and the straight edge now, if you find any, using a marker pen is that you'd just simply put a mark roughly where you think it is. This means when you come back to do some secondary checks with the feeler gauge, what you can do is uh, run the feeler gauge underneath the ruler and work out what the height is. There will be an allow allowable tolerance, but generally, if you can see a gap, it probably will mean that it needs a skim. So let me try and find one for you. So as you can see, we found a couple of spots that I've marked with a pen. Now we're gonna get in a bit closer and have a look at them. So right there, you can see, got some light coming up from underneath. I'll grab the feeler gauges. What we're trying to achieve here, really, is just to get a slight pinch. So both sides are touching, which actually that's not far off which is a 0.2 millimeter gap. That's way too big. And this cylinder head will need a skim. Thanks for that, Jim. Hopefully that makes sense to those of you watching. 
and to clarify having the flat edge against the cylinder head surface means that you can see any deviation in that mating surface. This can be a very significant problem if for example an engine is overheated. Having followed Jim's guide and done all the various measurements I found that my cylinder head didn't need to be skimmed and I was happy to go ahead and start reassembling things. I had a brand new set of cylinder head bolts and I had cleaned and run a tap down into each of the bolt holes in the engine block. This way I could ensure that when I tightened the bolts down to torque they were actually at torque and that they hadn't just gotten stuck on a bad thread or a blocked bolt hole. At this point I'm just fully tightening each of the cylinder head bolts down just using my hands. And then it's time to crack out the torque wrench. That's stage one of tightening down the head. There are actually three stages. The second stage is just a 90 degree turn and then the third stage is another 90 degree turn. So let's crack on with those as well. I'd like to thank you for watching the video up until this point and I would love it if you mash that thumbs up button right now just to let me know you're still watching. Next up comes the fun of putting all the followers or cam followers into the cam carrier. I've been storing these in oil for the past few weeks so that they didn't get rusty but they have been through the ultrasonic cleaner so that they are nice and shiny and clean. If you're wondering why I'm not putting them back in the exact location that they came from it's because when I took the cam carrier off they all fell out and I have no idea where they actually all came from originally so I'm just putting them back hoping that they're they are not too worn in any one place that they'll cause a problem. The manual for doing this job shows um, some tem templates you can use to make some special tools to hold all of these uh, followers in place as you turn the um, cam carrier over. That seemed like a lot of hard work to me so I came up with my own special way of uh, keeping all of the cam followers in place as I put the cam carrier back on the head. So I would like to present to you the Punto How To Cardboard Cam Retention Tool that I made using a piece of cardboard. Seriously though, this really works quite easily and yeah, why waste time making tools that you don't need to waste. A little bit of fiddling around just to get the uh, cardboard back out again, but it was still a hell of a lot easier and quicker than trying to custom make your own tools. For this next part, make sure that your timing tool for the crank is bolted in position. This locks all four pistons in the midpoint of the stroke. As you bolt the uh, cam carrier down, it's going to start to press on the valve springs and start to slowly open some of those valves. And the last thing you want is the valve to make contact with a piston before you've even finished rebuilding the engine and completely write off all the work that you've just been doing. And then it's not long before we unleash the torque wrench again. Let's go back to Jim now and get a little bit more advice on things we can do whilst the engine is in bits. Doing a similar flatness check on the inlet and exhaust face is very useful and you can do the same on the inlet uh, manifold and the exhaust manifold because what you don't want to do once you put these back together is find out you've got an air leak um, that could be easily solved whilst everything's apart. Um, I'd also check on certain cylinder heads I'd be checking for any cracks between the valves, which is a common thing, certainly on aluminium cylinder heads. Depending on the mileage of your engine as well, I'll be looking at the valve stem seals because that's an easy job to replace whilst all this is apart. If everything's got to come off, it's easy to do it in one big job and rather than having to take the cylinder head off two, maybe three times because you've missed something or something else has happened further down the line. Next up, I put all the plugs back in the cam cover that stop the oil coming out of the bolt holes. I'm putting new rubber o-rings on each and every one of them so that I can make sure that there is no oil leaks. Next up is the exhaust heat shield, which has had a bit of a clean up. Then goes back the upper part of the inlet manifold. Uh, it's got four rubber o-rings that go between the metal and the plastic parts to make sure you've got a good seal, so make sure they're all in place. All of the bolts for this have been cleaned up and nickel plated. I reinstalled the throttle body, the throttle cable, all the associated uh, wiring plugs were reconnected and the throttle linkage was all connected. We are now ready to set the timing on our engine. To set the timing, you are going to need to buy these tools to set the timing. This is a kit that you can buy and this kit cost less than about £15, I think it was about £12, something like that. The tools are still in place from when we disassembled the engine. We have the crank locking tool here at the bottom of the engine, up top. 
we have got one cam locking tool just locking both cams in place so they won't rotate and then we have the uh, piston indicators just showing us where in the ball the pistons are. In this configuration the engine is set in time and we can start installing our cam belt. This is a bit fiddly to show on camera but in essence you thread the cam belt over the bottom crank pulley, over the wheel for the water pump and then over the camshaft pulley at the top. At this point we've not installed the cam belt tensioner but that comes next. This is the cam belt tensioner and the stud for it is on the side of the cylinder head. Here's the tensioner installed in the engine and as you can see it's very difficult to film and, and capture this on video. The back face of the cam belt goes around the tensioner. There is one 13mm bolt securing the tensioner in place. Now what I need to do is I need to get the tension on the belt and then do the bolt up whilst maintaining the tension on the belt. So I'm going to try and do that now. This is really fiddly to do and as you can imagine even more difficult to film. Basically you use this special tool that has pins that goes into the front of the timing belt tensioner and then you use a spanner to tighten the nut on the outside of the tensioner. That then sets the tension of the belt. As you can see here in this close up, as I turn the tensioner, there are some parts inside the middle of the tensioner that are moving and that's to help set the tension correctly. And there are marks on these two parts which need to be aligned in order for the tension to be set. So now is the time to turn the engine a couple of turns to make sure nothing is binding, that we're not going to have pistons meeting the valves. I'm going to have to take off the locking tools on the crank and then I'm also going to have to reach over and take out the locking tool from the front of the engine. It takes two turns of the crank in order to get one turn of the camshaft, so you will need to turn the engine over twice at the bottom to make sure that nothing is binding, nothing is going to crash into anything else. And th thankfully, on this occasion, everything is turning freely, and I'm very happy that we can now look at getting this engine started. With a new oil filter installed, I topped up the oil. We'll get that up to the right level. I'm using some Shell Helix stuff here. This is an older car, so it calls for 10W40 oil. I've also reinstalled all the spark plugs and HT leads. I've also reconnected all the coolant pipes and topped up the coolant. And here we are. It is time to start the car for the first time since taking it all apart. Is it going to start? Yes, it does. That's fantastic. Really pleased with that. Just one small minor problem. Have you noticed what it could be? This oil leak led to quite a lot of smoke and I was a little bit confused for a while, but have you figured out why I was uh, getting a lot of oil leaking out the front of the engine? It's because when I removed this cam locking tool from the front of the engine, I forgot to put the bung back in the hole. That means any oil pumped up to the camshaft is pumped out of the front of the engine onto the exhaust manifold. Whilst I sort out my mistake, let's hear from Jim one last time. The last question Andy's asked me is what advice would I give you guys at home? And that would be get as much information as you can. Having a massive stack of manuals is really helpful. Uh, there's so much information on the internet now with, on Google and YouTube. So try and get as much information on the job you're about to do before you start it. The second one, when working with engines and gearboxes or anything like that, Cleanliness is a huge factor because any dust or debris that gets in can lead to premature wear and you don't want to be taking your car off the road for another time because you've missed something. Uh, the third piece of information is double check everything, particularly when working with um, engine timing because just a quick slip up there can cost quite a lot of money if it goes wrong. And the last one is don't be afraid to take anything on yourself. When I first bought the Cortina, I didn't know anything. And since then I've taught myself to weld, I've stripped and rebuilt the gearbox, made my own wiring loop and I even painted it in here and I hadn't got any information. I just had a go and it seems to have turned out all right. So all the best in the future when you're taking this on and apart and uh, back to Andy. Thank you, Jim. And thank you for making those little clips for everyone watching. Um, hopefully he's given you some good ideas on doing this kind of work. Uh, he's got a really good channel so do go over to Jim Builds and check his channel out. I will pop a little link in the description below and up on the screen in a card right now. All that's left to, to do on the car now before we can take it out for a test drive is some final bits of assembly of the top of the engine. We need to put a new air filter in, all the pipe work, all the stuff that I've been pulling off and putting back on repeatedly over the last few weeks. 
so I'm not going to bore you with that. You've probably seen enough now anyway. So we will save the test drive for another day. On the screen right now is the video covering how you can nickel plate parts of your car. This helps prevent rust and it also gives this lovely shiny finish on parts. So do go and check that video out. Otherwise, the other video here is the uh, most recent of the series of rebuilding this engine. So do check that one out as well if you come here and this is your first video. Uh, it's a whole project, there's three videos covering the disassembly and reassembly of this engine, so do go and check that out. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Take care.